Hey, here we go. Five one traffic information, rotary traffic lifting from FATO two four in your one. So, did you feel a big shutter going through translational lift? Uh, I didn't even notice it. To exactly. be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. So, you imagine as a VIP back there or a patient, um, you don't have that big shutter, which a lot of aircraft do. Mm -hmm. So right now we're already doing 120 knots and I'm only pulling like 75 percent. Not even working this thing. So again, I have it in attitude mode and I basically have set the aircraft at the attitude that I want it in, just like any pilot would do in any aircraft. And as long as I set it there, I can basically let, let go of the controls and it's going to hold it in this attitude. Now if I have winds pushing me or some other type of influence, it might change it, yes. but overall, it'll just stay just like this. If I want to engage the autopilot system, it's as simple as one button, and now I've engaged my heading, I've engaged my airspeed, and I've also engaged the altitude hold. So again, one button, I've engaged the autopilot system and it'll hold this all day long until I tell it something different. Sure. This autopilot system was developed by Bell for Bell products, so we have this in the uh, 429, we have a very similar one in the 412, and then they just announced the similar system in the 407. Uh, they just announced that yesterday at the show. Right. So uh, it's very simple. Up on top up here you have what we call the uh, display panel or some people call it the uh, scoreboard. That's basically telling me what the autopilot system is doing. So right now it's holding airspeed. Mm -hmm. It's coupled to my side, so see the arrow coupled to my side? And then it says heading and then vertical speed. So right now if I want to change heading with the little knob right here, I would change the heading bug and it will fly to that new heading. So literally, when I do cross-country flights, unless I have it coupled up for the GPS or, or any other navigation, this is the way I'm doing. I'm just, I'm sitting here with my hand just flying the aircraft. And again, don't tell the boss that because she thinks we're working hard. So, vertical speed, again, if it's on this side, I would manage my vertical speed with right here. So all I would have to do is push this up or push it down and it changes my vertical speed to whatever altitude I want to hold it at. You see where airspeed's on the right side? See my airspeed? Mm -hmm. Not only does it move the bug, but it also tells me, okay, where am I going to be at? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it down to 100 knots. And again, hands and feet off, it keeps it in trim. So if you're shooting an approach, if you're just coming into an airport, you can make a very smooth transition just by managing your, your system. Also on heading, so for instance, uh, we go direct back to Farmborough. I can uh, hit uh, navigation, and what it's going to do, it's going to turn me left or right back toward the GPS navigation that I'm requesting. Again, it's going to manage my altitude, it's going to manage my airspeed, it's going to change my power settings mm -hmm. at whatever I need, and it's going to make a nice smooth turn on course back to uh, where I want to go. You can also see that it says EGLF, which is Farmborough. It tells us that we're 9.6 nautical miles away. At this airspeed, we're five minutes away. And then there's the, the wind vector. So right now, it tells me that my winds are basically off the right side at nine knots. So um, again, managing the system is very simple. Doing instrument approaches or any type of instrument procedures flying IMC in this is actually fairly simple. So, and then you couple that up with a nice Garmin system. Life is pretty good.